Welcome to uh, more preseason coverage with me, Travis Gafford, here in the U.GG uh, on the U.GG Caffeine Stream and the Caffeine Studio with coverage brought to you by Alienware. I'm joined right now uh, by two lovely individuals, uh, friends of mine uh, from CLG. How's it going? Your friend? You know, uh, here's, the, here's the problem. I was going to say friend with Nick, <laughs> and then I just was like a friend of mine and also the coach of CLG. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I got the plural. Yeah, you did. You're right. You're, yes. my, my Congratulations, he got you into the party. I finally upgraded. Yes. I'm finally upgraded. Uh, <laughs> Nick Allen, Walden Green, uh, how's Hello. it going, guys? Good. How are you? Okay. Oh, are we shaking oh, hands? Oh, I'm not shaking your hand. Okay. Yeah. Friends we shake hands. It's, it's we don't far. have a wide shot, so it just looks like it's good. We can like, we just the hand. No, anyway, no. you're not going to shake hands. I'm going to stay right. Here. Great. Yeah. Well, I'm glad the friendship overall yeah, is going to be amounted to something. It's good to be here. Let's get into it. Um, cool. First off, uh, what are your respective titles at CLG at, as it stands? I am the COO of CLG. Am I look? I'm looking at you. Yes. I'm not looking. Over we here. had this discussion at... literally before. Okay. The, cool. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm the COO. Yeah. I'm the head coach. Yeah. Congratulations. This is new. <laughs> this is not new. No. 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 Okay. Exactly. Well. Uh, but just for anybody that's watching, uh, so that they know, uh, we are, if you're watching the VOD, we're doing this live on the Caffeine channel for U.GG, uh, but if you're watching it on YouTube, that's why sometimes we're going to have questions from the chat. Uh, either way, uh, so first off, let's talk a little bit about Weldon coming on to CLG. <coughs> yeah. So what, what was the decision behind that, this, Nick? Like, how did you end up uh, bringing Weldon on? And I'm really enjoying <laughs> the fact that you have to answer this question in, in front, front of him. him. Yeah. Exactly. Well, he was our last pick. I'm okay. really curious um, about this. Yeah. yeah. So we, I, I, we interviewed more than a dozen head coaches, like in-depth interview. In some cases, we like brought people on site. We wanted to make sure that we had the right, the right person. Um, and through all of our conversations we kept going back to the maturity and the calculated approach that Weldon was bringing to the table, his thoroughness and uh, in-depth answering all the questions that we had, his alignment with, uh, with management, with the leadership of CLG and how we think about player development, but also the role of the head coach. Uh, and we were just, we were really impressed. And so I think it was, you know, we wanted to be able to check our assumptions against all these other coaches, and we did, and we kept coming back that Weldon was far and away the, the guy that we wanted for the job. You said you brought uh, certain people on site. Did you bring Weldon on site as part of the interview process? Did we bring you on site? Yeah, we did. Yeah, okay. yeah. Did yeah. you fly from Europe for that? Okay, you were here. Okay. Yeah. Uh, well, either way. Yeah, he was in town al already for some Oh, nice. Okay. Yeah. I, it would have been really impressive to me if you flew from Finland or wherever it is you're in Europe, or were in Europe those days. Uh, so, Weldon, uh, similarly, why CLG? Uh, so, I guess this has kind of been my vision starting in around 2012 when I thought that the best way to influence eSport athletes at the amateur level would be to work in the pro level and kind of uh, sh and construct a team along a philosophy that is that is holistic in nature, that includes mental and physical well-being uh, as a way of being a better athlete in, in order to improve performance, right? Not just like as a side effect, and, and we do this just because. And uh, so that's, uh, I was kind of waiting for the first opportunity that would allow me to take a position like this, but as a, you know, mid-30s, family guy with with a lot of kids uh and i think that esport basically started catching up this year in terms of in terms of what's possible to do so i was able to step from like a, a purely consulting role where i was working you know with um working and supporting myself like with my own business and then kind of working on the side in esport to working full-time esport yeah and, and it's just it's just a, I think it's just a growth of the scene in general and uh this position has popped up before at various times in the past but it's just it was never feasible to, to actually do with the kids that I have to actually feed them also at the same time. Yeah. That was the main <laughs> so, issue. It, it <laughs> couldn't like do it and also feed children. Feed the children versus, yes. Yeah, so yeah. Mm. So we hit the bare minimum to feed children, and so here okay. I am. The bare it's minimum. Instantly well, jumped in. So, sounds like uh, <laughs> things are good over there if this is the I bare minimum. I just have minimum. too many <laughs> children. That's yeah. the real problem. For okay, him. okay. It's it's for him. Four yeah. kids is a lot. It's about the children, not the compensation. Uh, all right, so, uh, yeah, because we should say something that's unique about you being this is a lot of people are like, okay, well, he's just coaching another team. Like, we've seen him on TSM, we've seen him uh, with G2, we've seen him with all these different organizations, but you actually, this is the first time that you've moved your family over here. This is like a long-term gig for you, it sounds like. 
Well, the relationship I had with Reginald was similar. He also brought the family over for the three months, but it was kind of like an under the table handshake that like, this is probably going to be three months because we want to finish off this year strong, but maybe not necessarily, you know, have this kind of investment uh, going forward. So that was also a fun trial. And um, I think it's going to be very similar to that. The difference being that I had to be a part of building this roster, whereas Parth was mainly, Parth and Reginald and the team there was mainly in charge of building that roster in TSM. But this is longer than three months. Okay. It's three years. Three years. Okay. So yeah. quite quite a much longer period <laughs> yeah. of time. Mm -hmm. For sure. Uh, so so Nick, what was sort of the since we've discussed Weldon, um, what was kind of the the look at twenty nineteen as you reflected on, on twenty eighteen? Because for CLG fans I think twenty eighteen was a pretty disappointing year. So so what was the approach that you took heading into the off season on how you were gonna change things up uh, going into twenty nineteen? Yeah, so our previous head coach and I think League of Legends coaching in general focus very heavily on in-game strategy. And our goal for the offseason was to build a staff, uh, a head coach and the supporting staff behind him that also has uh, a lot of strength in the out-of-game system building that's really important for the development and growth of individual players. And so we felt we, you know, with that goal in mind, there were not a ton of folks that could uh, create a system like that, which is why Weldon obviously is here, but why we're so interested in working with him. And we felt like we wanted to, to take a different approach than how all the other teams were doing it. Um, and a lot of this comes from, you know, we're owned by MSG. MSG comes with a ton of traditional sports experience. And Weldon went through, not only did he talk to the folks at CLG, he talked to a bunch of the heavy hitters up at, uh, at MSG as well. They got to interview him and learn about who he is and his overall approach. But we felt that we wanted to really index heavily in these this out of game sort of player growth perspective and, and strategy versus where we saw like this heavy index into in game strategy. And so, so much of our work over the off season and going into this year is like creating these systems and creating this framework for players to reach their peak performance. And Weldon's obviously a a key part of of that happening. Yeah, I mean, what? Yeah, what? Because you kind of mentioned that you want to go about things differently than some of the other teams are going about mm -hmm. in terms of like building the support and all this stuff. Can you elaborate a little bit on like what the differentiating factors are between CLG and the other LCS teams? Yeah, I think what you'll find generally, um, and I can't, you know, I don't know the day to day of each of these head coaches, but I think what you would traditionally what you've seen and what our research has shown is that when you have um, a strategy, a strategist, in game strategist, sort of the head of your of your team, their systems, their thinking, their day-to-day -day approach to developing the team is gonna look very different than when you start start with a foundation of of sort of out of great out of game training and mental development and resilience building. And so um, top to bottom, I think our overall approach is going to look pretty different. Though, you know, we have Irene, who is our, our strategy coach, um, who's going to look a lot like what we see traditional esports coaches looking like. Yeah. So headed into the off season, well, then you come on board, and it sounds like you probably had a, a pretty big role, if if not the biggest, in deciding the roster for 2019. Is this would that be a fair statement? Um. Yeah, I mean, I think if you look at roster building as a collaborative effort, then I think I was definitely like in the middle mm -hmm. of all of the strings because there was nobody else to grab them and start pulling. Sure. Mm -hmm. So uh, maybe we can talk about the new additions to the, the main LCS roster. So we got Power of Evil. Yeah. So uh, do you want to uh, sort of discuss why Power of Evil was the decision you guys went for in, in the midline? Yeah, so uh, the first thing we did was crunch a lot of numbers and talk to a lot of different people to get evaluations of players. So we were looking for like player fit in terms of the player being like professional and they were reflected well upon by teammates and stuff like that. And then also uh, because CLG has traditionally to the much, much annoyance of like other team owners had generally had a higher level of performance like per dollar spent on the roster than almost any other team in history. And that's all mostly credit to Tony, I think, and the players like pulling pulling out those performances. But I think that um, we were looking for a very similar kind of money ball feeling where we're looking for um, somebody who far outperforms maybe like the perception of them. And I wanted to purely upgrade uh, Nike damage percentage on enemy champions 
with meta picks in the mid lane. And so when I looked at all the numbers and I noticed that, you know, for the past four seasons that Power of Evil has consistently done like above 35% of the team's damage, like in, in big games and in small games and across games where he was carrying and games where he was losing. And then when I looked at his picks and I found how he would like investigate the meta and kind of be ahead of the curve. And when I saw like how consistently he's able to just like put out really, really big numbers um, in team fights, I thought that this is a person who's going to pair really well with Stixe, who's also really good at this. And it's going to, if we just compare it pure numbers wise to Huhi. Now, Huhi brings a lot of other stuff to the table, you know, in terms of leadership and, and, and roaming and playmaking. But if we just go pure numbers wise, he's going to like effectively double the damage that's coming out of the mid lane carry role. And that, I think, will clinch a lot more team fights in the, yeah. in the year to come. So that was the look there. And that's why he was kind of like on the top of our pile of people that we were aiming at in, in order for us to to really know that he was at the top we ended up we did analysis on i think pretty much every player in competitive league of legends like at the top level yeah. um and our power ranking you know was a mile long to be able to identify that specific characteristic around poe now i would assume that even beyond the stats there are other reasons or other factors that go into bringing a player on uh maybe even uh on the org side like you guys have to decide like Weldon might make that suggestion, or, or you guys are getting aligned on this. What is it on the organization side that made CLG uh, want to make that bet on a person, you know, even outside the game? Yeah, we, I mean, we, again, we go through these lengthy processes where we deeply vet the players, and so much of that vetting process is about understanding how this person is going to fit into our broader organization and what their goals are, right? Like, we, we're not willing to bring an incredibly talented player uh, that is going to be really tough to work with or is going to uh, not be a good teammate or, you know, the list goes on and on. Um, and so part of that, you know, POE, we are really impressed with his mindset around competition and also being, you know, his explanations around how to be a really good teammate. Actually, uh, it was pretty stark. We talked to almost every previous teammate on a lot of our top mid choices and to a T, Pretty much everybody that we talked to who was on a team with him, when asked, like, who was your, who is your favorite person that you have ever been on a team with that you would want to be on a team with again? And they, they said Tristan, or Power okay. of Evil. Yeah, yeah he got, was, like, raving was, reviews, basically. Yeah, yeah. yeah he's, uh, he's very, like, chill and long-term focused and sees it as his duty to, like, be the best person that he can be and yeah, also yeah. have take teammates where they are and, like, help them get better, too, yep. in a very, like, you know, let's let's win kind of way, but without being really aggressive and, and kind of vindictive about it. Yeah. Uh, do you want to talk about jungle? Sure. Go for it. Okay. Yeah, I mean, what, so what, what was the decision uh, in the jungle? Um, mainly, I wanted to try developing a player in the jungle because I think that the, like, CLG was just coming off of a, like an investment in the jungle that didn't work out. And so the, the flavor in the water with the executives was we should like try not investing in that role and try developing in that role and do, this, do the opposite thing of whatever we did last year. You know? <laughs> yeah. So I was like, all right, so we have this guy. He just had two fantastic stage games. I talked to um, all the other players on his team. They all think that he's great. And then we start getting offer, you know, like people... People saying, like, from other LCS teams, like, hey, you know, like, this guy's really good. Uh, you know, can we talk to him? We're like, no, he's ours. So, you know, then we, um, then we get to uh, actually see that he's really impressing other pro players. So then I started talking to other pro players, and they were all saying, like, hey, there's this guy. You know, he's, he's, he's impressing. You know, he's, what do I want to say? He's really, uh, he's really hard to play against, okay. that's what they're saying, you know, in, mm -hmm. in polite ways. But I can read between the lines and yeah. watch the games and see that, you know, he's crushing them. Yeah. And, 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 and I was and like, okay, we'll give it a shot. And that's a choice that we make knowing that we have a system in place which we think we can actually truly develop really, yeah. right? Like, we probably wouldn't made the same, I'm not, I, I'm not sure, but like, it was an easy decision to make because Weldon is here and his general strategy towards player development. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I mean, outs again, sort of similar situation. Uh, obviously, you had found that he had performed well, uh, but what was the decision to sort of, was it just you guys were comfortable with him from previous years as a, as a person? Like, mm -hmm. what on the personal front, what was the decision to keep him around? Yeah, we had seen, you know, a split with him on our academy team um, or longer. 
and them seeing a lot of success. And so... Getting second place at Worlds. Yes, at the Academy, Academy Worlds, Worlds, right. Yeah. Um, and talking to his teammates and listening into scrims, all these things are, give us data as to how is this person going to fit into this new system with Weldon coming on. So Weldon sits down and talks with the players too. It was just a thorough analysis of, you know, what are our options? What is our system next year? What are our goals? And Wiggly fits in great with yeah. uh, what we're looking to accomplish. And thus Wiggly now on CLG main lineup. Uh, yep. Uh, this question, I, I don't know which one of you guys want to tackle it, but I know that there is a sentiment among some LCS fans, some CLG fans that like, all right, we saw like a 40% roster change, uh, but you know they would have liked to have seen something more comprehensive, mm -hmm. uh, more in line with, uh, say, what Golden Guardians or some of the other teams have done, where after having a rough year, like they made dramatic changes, mm -hmm. you know, 60% or more in certain cases. So um, what, uh, why not be more dramatic in, in the roster turnover? We feel like we have so many strong pieces. Um, I mean, we have a good sense of what went wrong last year, um, but still a little surprised as to we couldn't make that collection of really incredible talent work. Um, and so we want to maintain the pieces that we think are strong for our roster. Um, and so, you know, keeping our bot lane, keeping Darshan on the top, we, um, we it's a known quantity for us, and we think we have a good sense of how to utilize those folks correctly in conjunction with Weldon to, to be successful. So um, we felt like we made changes in the places we really fundamentally were um, seeing the biggest issues. And from there, we think, again, we have like a, we have a really strong roster based on what we've seen last year going into this year, too. Yeah, I feel like, uh, you know, respectfully, Darshan does have a lot of critics. Hmm. Uh, and there were definitely rumors floating around of, like, Flame potentially coming onto the, the team. Mm -hmm. uh, what was the decision to, to not change him out? And I don't know if you want to speak to the rumors around Flame or, or however that you guys want to address that. But I think a lot of people are really curious about that. Well, we, ta we considered every position when we were doing the strategy. Mm -hmm. And so we talked to people in almost every role um, and certainly around mid jungle and um, top, like we talked to a lot of different people, uh, like, like players, right? Mm -hmm. Who were calling CLG and saying like, hey, you know, can we talk? And we would schedule, schedule talks. And um, so I, th I think that um, like people who are getting words from agents and words from players about who's talking to which teams, like I don't think that's necessarily inaccurate. But like the state of the decision making within CLG, definitely wasn't as a, like you know, as advanced as uh, as what maybe from the outside it looked like. Because because if you're a team and you're trying to do the best for yourself strategically in the off season, like we're looking out for the CLG fans, we should consider every single possibility and try to see what they have to offer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And CLG was in a I'm and I'm and I'm speaking to the fans here, like so that you understand. Like CLG was in a tough position last year. I think that you need to understand that like we didn't have like the best ending to the to the to either season. And so we're negotiating from a place of like low power. You know, we can't be like, hey, we're we're the team that got first place last year and come on to a you know a winning squad and, and so when we're resetting a roster, um, what one of the biggest bargaining chips that you have in off season strategy is stability. Because if you're a new team, like in LEC, when the new team's coming in, or if you're a team that's blowing up the whole roster, the kind of the best you can do is offer like, well, this is what it might look like, and this is what it might look like. And what we found out is that when we say, hey, we have uh, Stixe and Biofrost and Darshan, like, and we have a, you know, a uh, rookie jungler, and this is what we're bringing to the table, it's like a lot easier to woo big talent like, like PoE. Yeah. And so I think that for us... Um, we wanted a lot of stability in the off season in order to get like uh, to bat above average in terms of like fighting for getting Tristan, getting Power of Evil, because it's not like these people don't get other offers that are very very enticing to them. Yeah. And unless you want to pay double or triple what other teams are to like woo them with cash, which I don't think is a very smart thing in esport, um, you should you should really try to fight for what you think. Uh, the team can do like to bring them otherwise mm -hmm. and i think that our new facility and that the players did a lot of work with that like the players were actually you know talking to uh power of evil and making sure that they had you know synch synchronicity with him before he came on to kind of kind of say like oh this is what it would feel like to be on the <coughs> team with you so we could offer that um and we were able to use that in our in our uh bargaining process yeah and 
And obviously last split, last season was not great. So I think anyone would look at any of our players and probably say, like, not that too. Not, yeah. not the best. Um, with that being said, like, Darshan specifically, his work ethic is unmatched. And I'm really excited personally because him and Weldon share a similar, somewhat of a similar, like, thought process to development and growth and together, I think they're going to be really strong. So I'm excited to see Darshan pop off this year. Yeah. yeah. Uh, stepping away from the roster, I uh, just want to tackle a couple yeah. topics about CLG holistically. Mm-hmm. Um, it's I know it's been a slow news week, uh, but one of the biggest scandals <laughs> to come out this week is the CLG jersey. Yeah. Um, and, Did and you not get my note? We're not supposed to Oh, we're not supposed, we're to, not talk. supposed <laughs> to talk about <laughs> that? All right. Well, this no. is live. So unlike <laughs> normally where I doctor all the footage to oh, just okay, do exactly it, what you want, Nick, <laughs> uh, we unfortunately can't do that this time. Um, so the the jerseys were received uh, mixed uh, feedback from, from the community. Yeah, also yeah, yeah. I saw subreddit. the Reddit post right away because I'm always just hounding yeah. on Reddit. And I thought it was really blown out of proportion because... I was w- looking at the jerseys like all week in filming, and they look really good when they're on people. I think it doesn't translate super well to film. Well, you know, some, the two dimensional and the colors. Yeah, what were you gonna? To be honest, some people so. were were saying uh, the color scheme was too close to Cloud Nine. Gotcha. And they like the darker jerseys. Yeah, you know, like a lot of the direction it comes down from from me of of what our goals are for this year, and I think so much of what we're trying to do is. Be like Cloud9? Um, be like, be exactly like Cloud9 <laughs> okay, okay, and everything good. in every way possible. Yeah. Uh, just have a very different approach than how we did things last year, both on the coaching side, um, but also in like our marketing and, and everything that we're doing. So I wanted to take us in a completely different direction and, uh, and move with something like, last year was all dark black with some blue accent. I was like, hey, let's make it bright, different. As sort of like a, a sign of like this is a new CLG going into 2019, uh, something different than last year. And we got some feedback from fans and from players and staff and everything, and everything seemed pretty good until we released them. And so uh, I, I personally really like them. I know the players really like them, and we've gotten a bunch of feedback from fans that are like, don't listen to those guys. These things are great. Um, but we hear folks loud and clear. So we're like, you know, you might see some New Jersey stuff. Not anytime soon, but okay. later down the line. Is uh, there a world yeah. where you offer a, a dark and light version of the jersey? Yeah, I mean, this like jersey, Twitter. I mean, like, honestly, this jersey's not going day, anywhere. Uh, yeah. yeah, but you you might see some variations or yeah. some difference going forward, yeah. Speaking about jerseys, jersey's a very uh, popular topic for some reason this offseason. I, I don't know why, but uh, I was talking to Nate Shot earlier uh, in, in the interview uh, that we did earlier today, and he was discussing some of the... Um, uh, unique challenges in the new uh, apparel partnership, the new jersey partnership with mm-hmm. Riot and, mm-hmm. and We Are Nations. Like, uh, what what has it been like for you guys tackling that uh, situation? Yeah, it's it's it is different. We're used to working with one specific vendor to curate and design this thing, and now we have to work with someone completely new. On I would I would say a pretty short, you know, much shorter timeline than we um, we generally go about these things. But that's what happens when you you're onboarding a new company. Um, and you know, you're working through the contract pieces. You're also working through design. Just, there's a lot going on. Um, with that being said, it is a different approach. Uh, and in general though, we have a ton of flexibility on, uh, you know, the creative of what we can do on the Jersey. What is in is sort of like the template in which it's, it's put on that's, that's league mandated. Um, though they wouldn't do something that's like completely contrary to what all the teams and players would like. So that being said, it's, it's just, for me, it's a new experience. Um, obviously, the reception to our jersey makes the whole thing, puts a cloud over the whole thing. But in general, like, uh, I'm not sure exactly what Nade Shot's concerns were on this type of thing, but it's been a pretty straightforward process. Okay, so easy for, for you guys on that. I think so. I think there's, like, you know, again, when you work with someone new, it doesn't always come out exactly how you want the first time, but there's a ton of iteration, and... Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to You to had a chance with. to blame all of this on the new Oh, partner. that's right. Oh. Yep, not going to do you that. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. It's, it's my fault. I take full responsibility. Wouldn't wow. ever be. But, you know, it, again, it's um, it's one of those things that we just have to learn how to work together best. And though I, I'm sure Nate Shot and others are having some concerns now, I'm, I'm, that I'll get worked through yeah. over the next My year. opinion is CLG was one of the first ones to go with the style of design that they had. 
Now Cloud9's copying them. Okay. Yeah. And meanwhile, CLG's pushing forward into New Frontiers yeah. again. Yeah. So well, I feel you. like kind of like CLG's ahead of the curve. Because exactly. people keep running to what they're yeah, yeah. doing. Like if you look, there's a couple teams also in Europe that are like adopting the CLG look. Yeah. And uh, I think it's, uh, I think it's well time done. for We're CLG to centers. push the barrier. <laughs> well done. I went 25 minutes without a headline for this interview, and now I have one, so I really appreciate that. That's, oh, well done. What have you it's, done? Uh, it's, you know, January is a slow month for uh, CPMs and yeah. all that stuff, so I have to really rev up and try hard. So thank you for that. If I, if um, I could just put, like, a stamp on it, just like a bone, I would say we really, really like our jerseys a lot, uh, but we also aren't so... Uh, obtuse that we aren't listening to the community and taking their feedback into account yeah. and pivoting as necessary. So. Uh, I know we've only got about five minutes before you have to run, but I do want to ask you, uh, generally speaking, uh, what are, like, outside the roster, what are the general things the CLG fans should look forward to? Because I feel like uh, right now they're vocally frustrated. So, yeah. like, what, what can fans expect for uh, in 2019? Yeah, at least in the next couple of weeks, we have some really cool content that we've put together for the start of the season. Um, as a sneak peek, we shot a bunch of really interesting footage during the off season oh, while yeah. we were trying to bring players on to CLG. And uh, so you might see some cool stuff around that. And I think in general, we have a, a new look, a new feel, and just a new approach to how we think about our team going into 2019. Really, it's about celebrating the fact that it's our players, our staff, our fans, everyone, our partners, everyone coming together as one to help us be successful. So how do we really embrace this idea that like fans have a role to play in our overall success too? And so you'll be seeing some more on that. Uh, and in general though, like we we're really firing on all cylinders. We have some really cool things lined up for social, for content. Uh, and rather than giving too much of, of it away now, I'm just looking forward to everyone seeing yeah. it. Yeah. And then expanding out from the org to the league, uh, how do you feel about the current state of the league? Again, I was talking to Nate Shot yeah. uh, earlier, and, and I brought up that I had heard um, th there's an owners meeting at the the end of last year. Mm -hmm. uh, how do you feel the teams and and CLG are generally feeling about the current state of the LCS and mm -hmm. their relationship with Riot and all that kind of stuff? You know, I'm not one to come out and just bash people on on live television, yeah. Travis. Um, the teams and Riot, I'm trying not to mirror exactly what I said, are trying are figuring out how to work together. And I think what I've been really pleased with in the whole thing is, especially in the last like three, four, five months, is how Riot has really brought the teams in to help make decisions and help guide where the league is going. And that honestly has been a little bit of a of a um, it's been taking some figuring out exactly what that's gonna look like and how teams can contribute. And not undermine things that are good for Riot and that sort of thing. But in general, I would say um, the relationship between teams and Riot is really deepening a lot. And I think that can only mean good things yeah. for for 2019. Do you think at the end of 2018 that the uh, existing franchises and owners were fully satisfied with the current state of the LCS and the relationship with Riot? Mm, I would say probably not. Part of it is, you know, the league, uh, it was year one of franchising, a lot of trailblazing, figuring out where to go. And then also what does the league versus the teams prioritize within their own sphere of influence? Um, so I, I feel like with the collaboration between the teams and the league, it's gotten better over yeah. time. Um, in general, though, I think people look around, especially the, you know, the, the, the owners that exist right now in the LCS, they look around and they see all, Esports growing massively, uh, tons of opportunity out there, and are very bullish to ensure that Riot and League of Legends are taking advantage of all those opportunities. You know, these guys, you know, often case they're billionaires, but these are incredibly ambitious entrepreneurs that have had a ton of business success. And I'm not to say that they're never happy, but they're always trying to go for what's the next big thing, right? And how do we how do we take advantage of all the real opportunity that's out there? And so I think if there is any level of frustration, it's about like, it's about this un, this unknown aspect of like, are we truly realizing the value, the potential of this league and thinking that there's still something on the table, whether that's revenue or marketing or fan growth or user acquisition or whatever those things are. Um, 
we're always pushing for more and more because we want to make sure this thing is set up to succeed as, yeah. as much as possible. Well, I think we have one t uh, time for one quick question cool. from the chat if anybody wants to, uh, to pull that up. Uh, okay, uh, so I think this is Bao. Uh, Lamb says, is Weldon only working on player development with the League Department? So are you doing any kind of player development outside of... Uh, so the League? way that I talked about it with Matt, who's my boss at CLG, is um, I'm going to focus really hard on the, on the LCS team this year as and be the coach there. And when I move on from focusing on the LCS team and winning the summers, the spring split and the summer split the World and Worlds and MSI, yeah. then my title will change and, yeah. it, and it might go cross-brand to other teams. But I would say I'm less working on player development right now. There's, there's a head of player development already at CLG, and I'm focused on uh, coaching this team to victory yeah. and just the League of Legends team it's, of, it's ten, been, of 10 people. It's been really confusing to me because uh, Nate Shot said that he thinks they're winning Worlds and they're going to win Spring and Summer. And I know Danon, uh, he was a little bit more reserved, but he did say that they're hoping to win. And you guys are planning on winning a lot of things. So I'm yeah, actually yeah. I'm really curious because it seems like there's a lot was of Was Nate Shot talking about... Academy ones? Oh, no, I don't know. I didn't, okay. He didn't specify, okay. so I, maybe <laughs> right. that was it. Yeah. Well, um, we can try, like, we're going to take first in spring. We'll give them first in summer, but we'll, we'll take second place. So okay. I'll, I'll be, because I want to go to MSI. We had, we, we're not aligned on that. Okay, so, okay, yeah. we got to figure uh, it out. But, I well, mean, if, you know, if, if there's a quid That's the other headline, quo. thank <laughs> you. <laughs> if there's a quid pro quo here, then, yeah. then I'm, I, I mean, I really like 100 Thieves, and they're kind of like XCLG at this point, so, you know, maybe we... We give them a little bit of favoritism. Wow, well then, the there's going to be so many options to pick from for this. Um, <laughs> is there anything you guys want to say to any of the fans out there? You want to kick it off? Oh, um, see you at finals. Oh, well, damn, bold statement. <laughs> uh, keep an eye out for this week and next. We have some cool stuff dropping. Uh, we love the passion and the feedback from our fans. You love, uh, and you the, love and all the that? DMs <laughs> and all the nasty comments, uh, but just the love and support too. So, like, um, just know that whenever you feel passionately about stuff and you're and you're pushing the org to do better, like we hear that and we we internalize it. And don't worry, like we've had tons of conversations about jerseys and different things. So, okay. it's that stuff isn't lost on us. So, thanks for the support. Thank you guys uh, both for joining me in the studio. Really sure. good to uh, sit down with you. And for everyone else, you can check out the rest of my coverage of all things esports right here. Well, not right here, but soon to be on my YouTube channel. Thanks. Hey, thanks so much for watching that interview. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, really big thanks to you.gg uh, for being able to throw this on the Caffeine channel. Uh, for everyone else, I just want to give a big shout out to Alienware for supporting all the content that I'm doing this year. Uh, there's a ton of stuff hitting the channel right now in preseason. We've got even more coming during LCS. I don't know if this outro is going to be shown before my award show on Sunday uh, on my channel, which the, the Sunday before LCS starts. I think that's the 20th, right? Yep, yeah, 20th. Uh, check that out. If not, check it out on the channel because the VOD will be going up here. There's so much happening. Thanks so much for watching my content and be sure to subscribe.